On a beautiful Sunday morning in Stanford, I walked out to the local museum and took my Ricoh Theta X. Using the time shift mode from the camera body, the picture quality is phenomenal with the default settings. It really looks phenomenal in bright light. I decided to try video frame extraction as an experiment. After returning home, I copied the 8K video files from the Ricoh Theta X over to my local Windows computer. By right-clicking on the file and looking at it in the properties, I can see that it's 8K, 5 frames per second, direct from the camera. As the museum does not allow selfie sticks, monopods, or tripods, I'm walking around the museum with a 6-inch threaded rod at the bottom of the Ricoh Theta X. I'm then walking around the museum as if it were a construction site, trying to capture the frames for archival purposes. Direct from the camera and some, you know, the rooms might be a little dimly lit. There is some noise that you can see on the darker parts of the frame. The frames can be extracted with FFmpeg or similar tools very easily and saved as still images. I'd like to repeat this experiment again with maybe some different settings on the video. Without any adjustment, uh, the video does look okay. The frames uh, do have some noise, but I think the main thing to look for is whether the, the detail level is high enough for what people want to use it for industrial use or you know, perhaps things like similar, similar to Street View. In this 2 FPS frame extraction test, the bitrate seems extremely low. I likely made an error in the settings configuration and I should have specified a higher bitrate. Something I'll look forward to correcting in the future. Despite the lower bitrate, which is going to impact the clarity of the images, I decided to inspect it and just take a look at what I had. Uh, you know, it, it looks okay, uh, but I just think it could be better with uh, a bit more effort on my part trying to figure out the, the proper bitrate for this. And open it up in the Rico Theta desktop application. The results look reasonable. Again, these are still images at this point. Uh, so I'm just clicking through the lower right-hand arrow side. And although it's frames from a video, it's now been converted into still images. So if you're walking around a hiking trail or a construction site or something like that, you can get a pretty good approximation as to how far the spheres are spaced out. This is a, another test clip. So this one's a video. It's at two frames per second. So you can get an idea of how far you have you can travel. I, mean, I think it's looks maybe, I don't know, I didn't measure, maybe three feet. I guess you can see for yourself. And also I'm testing the clarity Again, I think I can get this clear because I think I messed up the bitrate and that one also probably has a stitching. It's on the uh, side of the camera, most likely. But this looks quite promising, uh, especially if you want to capture an uh, entire floor very quickly. Um, let's zoom in on this guy. You know, it looks pretty reasonable especially if you're using it for you know, maybe to check the piping or the conduits at some type of construction site. This 2 FPS at 8K, it looks pretty good. I'd like to work on this more and change the bit rate to try to get some better frames. However, if you want to play around with it, there is this free app. We're just using it for testing of the API. 
So it's not designed for full use, but you can freely download it and install it on your Android phone. There's also a Windows desktop version as well too. Once you set the frame rate and the resolution to 8K, in this case 2 FPS, you need to use the shutter button on the camera to start and stop the video. I don't think the app works right now with the, if you press the app to start and stop the video, you can use it to set the resolution and frame rate, but not to start and stop the video. After you press the shutter button or the, the video stop button, uh, it still stays in 8K 2 FPS or 8K 5 FPS here. Uh, in this demo, I did use the mobile app again to change it to 5 FPS. So you can see two different workflows, one at 2 FPS and one at 5 FPS. The reason to use a lower frame rate is if you're doing frame extraction, you probably already need the frame every three feet or so, and it makes the file size smaller. After you take all your videos, then you plug the camera into your computer with a USB cable. So the window on the left is the camera file and you just copy it over. So just drag and drop it onto your, your local storage. You need to have it in a local storage to actually see the, uh, the correct properties and you can just check to see that it's at the correct frame rate and the resolution that you are, were expecting. If you right click it while on the camera file, it's not going to show the same data. Ideally, you're walking around with the camera on a monopod over your head, or maybe you've even attached it to a hard hat at a construction site. Um, right now, you can't really see the motion, but the earlier videos did show it. This feature is designed for frame extraction. And I'm using FFmpeg in this demonstration. It's hyphen I, and it's the name of the file that you're going to extract the frames from. Hyphen R one slash one, and then the directory, or uh, there's some syntax if you want it to be the name of the original name of the video file, and then like a sequence. The only weird thing is that uh, hyphen percentage zero five d.jpg. Like, what the heck does that mean, right? So it just says to put five decimal or five numbers. So if you if you look at the file name, it's hyphen zero 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 I lost count one and then zero or four zeros and two, and then four zeros and three. And then the word frames is just the name of the folder that you're saving it into. So there's this folder frames in the same directory as that video file. And within that frames folder, it's going to save all the frames as individual JPEG files. And again, this is really a design to be, for example, if you're hiking on a trail and you just want to capture all the, like a, you know, like a longer hike and you don't want to take still images because you, you don't want to stop. And um, you might want to take it faster than the still images can take it. So this is taking it at two frames per second, right? So it's a very fascinating feature for me. Um, I think I want to do more work on it and try to play around with the bit rate a bit more to get a little bit less noise in the pictures. Although in bright light, it does look pretty fantastic. I uh, specifically took it within a museum on Stanford campus because I wanted to try to introduce noise and you know it does look better if you're in direct sunlight so if you did want to experiment with the api and maybe give us some feedback or some report on your tests um, you know you might want to try to see what happens uh, indoor um, just to prototype something and again it's not really designed for production use so much as just to play around with the api feel free to go to the blog and you can download the Android or Windows versions of it. And if you have any problems, just post something in the form and we'll try to help you. Just keep in mind that it's not designed for uh, artistic use or things like that. We're just trying to test the API at this stage. On the 2 FPS and the 5 FPS video files, there does appear to be additional metadata 
Uh, so I haven't spent time parsing that. Uh, that's also something you could take a look at too.